Dryden then. So here we have the Diesel Herbert from Plugin Alliance and Brainworks, a modern metal monster. So in this video, we're going to go over all of the controls. We'll spend a little bit more time on the recording chains, because if you're familiar with the Brainworks amps, you know that our recording chains are going to make a huge difference on the overall sound. So let's go ahead and jump right in. So why is this amp called Herbert? Well, Herbert was Peter Diesel's father, and Herbert was said to have a loud and forceful voice. And that's exactly what this amp is. Loud, forceful, and brutal. It is totally metal, but as you heard there, we can also clean up real nice here on channel one. So let's start up here at the top toolbar. Of course, we have a bypass switch right up here. So bypass it, of course. Just gonna get that dry guitar sound. Also have a bypass right down here on our power switch. We have our presets right up here, at least in Studio One we do. If they're not showing up by default, just click this list icon, import the presets, head to this directory here, and we'll grab our diesel right here it is. Control A, open, and there we go. All of our uh, presets right there. And then we have a undo and redo button. So if you make some change in here, say I change my delay and then it sounds awful, I can undo it or of course redo it. And we have a bunch of different steps. We have our A, B, C, and D slots. And what this basically means is we can have four presets or four snapshots for every master preset. So whenever you're setting up your presets, you might wanna do what we have here. So here on A, we have a really heavy sound. Then we could go right to B get a different sound or right to C and get a clean sound, right? So you could set this up to have, you know, sounds that go together all within one master preset. Then we have copy and paste. So if I like something on, we'll say B, I can copy it and then paste that in here to D, then make whatever small changes I might want to make. We can of course reset any of these slots to their default settings. Then we have our effects rack, which we can get to by clicking on the name or of course clicking on the uh, faceplate here. And we're gonna spend more time here pretty soon uh, on the effects rack, especially the uh, recording chains. We have an about button right there if you wanna see uh, the credits for this plugin. So now down to our tone stack and we have three separate channels here. We have a clean channel, a crunch channel with different voicings here and a super high gain channel on channel three. So let's go through these real quick. We'll start here on channel one. We'll grab this sample right here. And again, keep in mind, our recording chain is gonna make a huge difference uh, to, the, uh, to the overall sound. So play that back. So you can get a very, very clean sound uh, out of this here. And I'm just using the scroll wheel on my mouse to adjust that. We can also press control and click and default those to their uh, default states. All right. Very, very clean here. All right, so just dial that in to taste like you would any other amp. Then let's move on to channel two here. And channel two has two voicings over here on the minus side. It's sort of that classic overdriven sound, sort of that Plexi or even JCM 800, that Marshall sort of a uh, sound uh, here on channel two. Now we can switch our channels just by clicking on the name or by using these switches down here. Just click it to switch it, switch it and switch it, okay? So channel two, just our gain, our volume, treble, middle, and bass. Again, we're gonna be on the minus here for right now and hear a little bit of that. So kind of just crunchy there. We turn the delay off. And of course the overall volume for that channel. Then we have this plus switch, which is gonna take it to the next level of crunch and really give you that diesel overdriven sound. You 
you can really get by with just channel one and two. A lot of times there's so much gain in this amp. I can even come back here to a more metal sample and just stay on channel two here and get a very brutal tone. That's just channel two. Then we have channel three, which is the brutal channel. <laughs> Plenty of gain on this channel. Overall volume of this channel, treble, middle, and bass. Nice scoop sound there. Then we have a mid cut and the mid cut affects every single channel, okay? So whenever it's on, it's gonna affect all of these channels. So we can control the intensity or basically the amount of that cut at around 400 Hertz and then make up here for that loss in level with our level knob. And it's been on the whole time, uh, the whole time here, uh, by the way. So let me grab a different sample here. And we'll hear this mid cut. Let's go to channel two. It's a little more open, a little bit less compressed. So you're gonna hear it a little bit more uh, here. So as I pull it up, of course, we're losing some of that level. So I can compensate with that with our level here. go to the sample here again. That just gives you that classic uh, modern sort of metal tone with that mid cut pulled up a bit. And of course, compensate with our level there. So of course, just dial that in to whatever sounds good to you. And then we have our master section here and we have this V2 and that's just for our second volume control. So if I want my volume control, our main volume right here set to a certain level, I can have my volume two set to a different level and then switch that on on the fly to get a, a louder sound overall. So I'll grab this here. So that's volume one, I can switch it to volume two. Of course, it's going to get uh, get louder there. All right, so you can just use that to switch, uh, you know, sort of switch back and forth between your volume levels real quickly there. Then we have a presence control. We'll grab this right here. Dial that in. And of course, that's going to affect all of our channels here. Okay, and then we have a deep control and deep is different from our bass control, all right? You can actually get some really good sounds by pulling your bass down and then pulling in some deep if you want sort of that different, uh, different sort of a, a low end response. So that's all of our controls here on the tone stack here on the front panel. So now let's head back to our effects rack. So here in our effects rack, we have things like a gate, delay, recording chains, input gain, okay? So let's go over our gate 
first, for those who don't know what a gate is, we'll explain it really quickly, just so we all know what we're talking about, man. So what our noise gate is going to do is shut down the guitar signal in between these spaces right here. Maybe we're palm muting or being very genty. Uh, that is what uh, our gate is gonna do for us. So if I turn it off and just listen to the spaces in between here. All right, you hear that amp noise in between those those spaces? Turn on our gate, use our threshold, and then our range. And with our range way down here, it's essentially gonna be off. So what we can do with our range is choose how much we want to pull that level down in between these uh, spaces essentially here. So we can really pull it out here or just dim it some down here. Hear it cut off, pull it way up here. All right, so use that of course to cut out that sound that you don't want in between your palm mutes or maybe you don't want your guitar you know, ringing out too long and you can control that with your built-in noise gate. Then we have a tight and smooth filter and these are essentially a high pass and a low pass and we have different positions to put this in the chain. We can have it in post, which would essentially be the same thing as putting a high pass or low pass after this amp or we can do it pre, and pre is going to affect the sound from the guitar, the dry sound from the guitar. So if your pickups are really uh, boomy, you might wanna put this on pre and dial in something here on tight. If your pickups are really bright, you might wanna put this on pre and dial out some of that brightness. Or if you have too much fizz, you might wanna put it on post and pull this down some and dial out some of that, you know, some of that fizz. The tight also works well if you're using seven, eight or nine string guitars and you can pull this up to around 90 or 100 or so and control that low end of those extended range guitars a little bit better. So if we look at our tight filter here on pre first, we're just affecting that dry guitar. If we put it on post, it's gonna sound radically different. One thing you can do for an effect is use your tight in post and then pull up your bass here and your deep here and get a different low end sound. All right, so just use that to control your overall bottom end. For me, whenever I play a nine string guitar, again, I bring this up a bit and put it on pre. Now, same thing for our smooth, of course, except on the opposite end. If we're having a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of fizz or something like that, we can dial that out here with our smooth filter. We'll put it on pre. All right. And if you're familiar with the Brainworks amps, you already know how, uh, how that works. And you might want to fast forward to the uh, recording chains part, which we're going to get to here in just a minute. But on to our delay. We've already seen a bit of it, but we'll cover it here real quick. Turn it on. So we can freely select our time right here. We can do times two divided by two, we have it linked to our host BPM right now, which is 120. So we can click here and choose a time division real, uh, real easily there. We have our mix. So basically how much of that delayed signal do you want in? In general, it's gonna be pretty low, okay? And then feedback, so again, how much you want that to feedback. If we pull this up too far, you're essentially gonna have a feedback loop. It's just gonna continue and continue for quite a while it's still going on now let me let me, let me pull that down and then we can lo-fi it up or dirty it up a bit uh, those delayed signals which can sound pretty cool and give you a bit of a different kind of character there you can also tap our delay so if you know the delay you want i can just tap here with my mouse and tap that out all right so that's our delay. Down here now, we have an input gain, a bypass the preamp, bypass the power amp, and a power soak. So if your pickup output is really, really low, you might wanna compensate a little bit here, or if you wanna use it as an effect to really drive this amp, uh, you can do that as well. 
Really drive that. Bypass the preamp. So you can have another preamp in the chain if you wanted uh, to do that. Bypass the power amp. Again, for an effect, or maybe you have a different power amp sort of plug-in, you want to have uh, that character uh, on the track, you can do that uh, as well. Then we have a power soak for the power amp, so we can pull down the overall volume and then compensate with, say, input gain here and here and volume and get sort of a different tone by driving those preamps a bit, uh, a bit differently and that, uh, you know, that power amp. So even at the same level, it's going to sound different with uh, different settings down here. In general, you're going to want to round minus 9, minus 10. So just control click to uh, let me uh, default this here. And again, for your input gain, probably around zero is where you're going to leave it most of the time. So now on to our recording chains. And this comes with a bunch of different recording chains, a bunch from diesel here. English cabs, which are the Marshall cabinets. We have Mesa cabinets here. Orange. We have the Shure as well, 120 of them. And if you want to use your own impulse response loader, you can just choose no recording chain. All right, let's put this on, say, one for now. We have our minus and plus buttons. If you just want to cycle through them as such, we have our auto switch. So we can switch between one bar and eight bars as far as, you know, as far as time goes and have this amp automatically switch for us, which is very helpful if you happen to be playing guitar, you know, physically playing guitar, and you don't want to reach up here every few seconds and try to change your uh, uh, recording chain. So just turn that on auto, start playing your, your guitar. That's going to automatically switch for you. Once you find the one you want, just stop and turn auto off there and maybe go back to the one that you uh, wanted. All right, then we have our RC info right here. And that's just going to tell us a bit more about each of these recording chains, what cabinet was used, the microphone used, the preamp used and the EQ if uh, if present, uh, that was used. All right, so that is all of the controls here on our diesel Herbert from plug in Alliance in Brainworks. All right, so now we're going to go a bit deeper here into our recording chains because our recording chains are going to make a gigantic difference to our overall sound. You can get incredibly diverse sounds just by changing up your recording chain, which is essentially an impulse response. So even something like one here. When I change that. Right, so radically, radically different, right? So now let's uh, look a little bit more at our recording chains and just sort of get an idea of how we can use this RC info to, to sort of guide us on maybe some changes we might want to make to our tone stack whenever we're changing our uh, recording chains. So we'll start here at number one. Again, RC info is on. And we can see the cabinet. We know it's a diesel cabinet. The microphone is a Neumann, and this is a condenser microphone. And it's on our cap which means it's right in the middle there, the cap on the speaker. And then we see the preamp here that's uh, used as well. So knowing that this is a condenser microphone, I know that a condenser microphone is going to respond differently than a dynamic microphone. A condenser microphone is gonna give me a bit more of an accurate sound. Now that doesn't mean that dynamic microphones are bad. They're not bad at all. They have their own sound, their own character, and they're very useful, especially for high output things like uh, guitar cabinets. But I know that a condenser microphone is going to have more top end, at least usually, than a uh, than a dynamic. So I might want to turn down my treble and perhaps some presence as well. All right. Then if I switch to the number two here, now we have a Neumann and a Shure SM58 on the edge. And the edge is, of course, the edge of our of our speaker there. So now we have a condenser and a dynamic, and I know this dynamic here is gonna have a certain mid range to it. So I might want to compensate here with some treble. Mm -hmm. 
Then if we look at something like uh, number eight here, this is just the Shure SM57 right on the cap. Again, right there, right there in the middle. So because I know the SM57 has its own sound, its own character, I might want to pull in a little more treble here, maybe a little bit more presence versus our just straight up condenser. If I pull that out. We go on to nine here. Now we have a short SM57 again on the edge, but we also have a Sterling ST170 on the cap. And the Sterling we know is an active ribbon microphone. And we know that ribbon microphones have a different kind of a low end, sort of a warm, wide low end. And they also capture a really good top end, sort of like a condenser, but a little bit smoother. So again, we might want to compensate with our treble and maybe our mid and even our low end here uh, as well. And of course, you know, presence as well. So you hear that low end. Let me uh, switch to a different sample here. Right, versus just that SM57. Go back to our ribbon there. Then if we look at some other ones here. So this is just the Sterling alone with no SM57 on it at all. Hear the difference that SM57 makes to our mids, huge difference. So again, you might want to think about uh, your tone stack and what you should do in those situations with your uh, different microphones. So here's a Sterling on the edge and the SM57 uh, on the edge as well. And this here is a Royer R121 on the cap, and we know the Royer uh, is a very classic uh, ribbon microphone. And then of course, that addition of the SM57 on the edge which is a very common uh, thing to do. Again, compensating here on our EQ or our tone stack for these different, uh, different setups. So now we have the RE20 on the cap and the SM57. Again, the SM57 gives us that attack, that mid range that we know from uh, you know, so many guitar tracks out there. Then if we go down here to number 32, you'll see we have the SM57 on the edge and a blueberry blue on the cap. And the blueberry blue, again, we know is a condenser microphone. So again, I might want to compensate on my top end because I might get a little too much, a little too much fizz. <laughs> But of course, also use your smooth filter there too. Now here we have just the uh, condenser microphone. So this large diaphragm condenser microphone is giving us a wider, more expansive low end. It's capturing a higher detailed uh, top end and a pretty good middle sound overall. But again, I might want to compensate on my top end here a bit because I know it's going to be a bit more top end heavy than it would be uh, with our SM57 included. <laughs> If we look at some more, so now we have the condenser microphone on the edge, just uh, just the edge there. Mm -hmm. 
Again, pretty good sound. And then here we have again that classic setup of a condenser microphone, a large diaphragm condenser on the cap, and then our SM57 on the edge. And again, because I know that a condenser is included, I might want to compensate a bit on my top end just so it's not uh, too harsh. Now in this case, we have the SPL Nugget on the edge and the SM57 on the edge, and then we have an EQ on this, uh, on this toe. And then here we have our RE20, again, this microphone right here on the edge. Uh, the RE20, again, is a dynamic microphone. This is just the condenser. Now we're on to our English cabinets and our English cabinets are our uh, Marshall cabinets. I'm not gonna go through all of these here. Uh, let's come down here. We have our Mesa cabinets, as we can see up here. Mesa cabinets are renowned for that uh, metal sound, especially in that late 2000s period. <laughs> Then we have our orange cabinets. We have some sure cabinets. Well, we just come right here. This is a uh, two by 12. So of course the sound's gonna be a bit different, especially in that low end there. That's a pretty good one. So something like that, of course, would need more, more treble there and less deep. Onto the shore cabinets there. Again, a total of 119 and then 124 uh, for no recording chain, all right? So again, use that auto switch and just play your uh, play your guitar and let that automatically switch for you. If you just want to start up quick to sort of hear the difference between a lot of these, start with one, two, uh, eight, nine, 11, 12, and 13, 14, 32, and 33, and then 37. And you'll get an idea uh, of how your different, uh, different microphones sound. <laughs> So that is all of the controls here on our diesel Herbert from Plugin Alliance and Brainworks. Now we're just going to go through some of these samples here and uh, make some adjustments as we uh, as we play through here.
All right, so that is the Diesel Herbert from Plugin Alliance and Brainworks. Head over to PluginAlliance.com to pick it up, or of course, get it as part of your Mega Bundle subscription. The Diesel Herbert is a modern Mega Metal monster, and it goes well with the VH4. It goes well with the Engel E646 VS from uh, Plugin Alliance and Brainworks as well. But again, this is the Diesel Herbert from Plugin Alliance and Brainworks.